As we continue to expand on what you can do with your portable PA system, we want to take a further look at the update to StagePass controller that coincides with the release of the new StagePass 200. We provided a detailed tutorial for StagePass controller when it originally launched alongside the StagePass 1K Mark II. Since then, StagePass controller has been updated to reflect each system's unique hardware features. So you'll notice some differences between interfaces like the StagePass 200 not having a pan knob, a monitor fader, or a stereo output meter since it only outputs audio as mono. And in this video, we'll provide a supplement to the previous tutorial by covering the StagePass 200's own unique features and functions, including the compressor, delay, chorus, mic simulator, and others. Similar to the StagePass 1K Mark II, with your StagePass 200 system on, simply open the StagePass controller app with your iOS or Android devices Bluetooth turned on. The device list will appear and show any nearby StagePass units. Tap Connect. If this is your first time pairing the devices, an image telling you to hold down the mixer's Bluetooth switch for one second will appear. This connection will allow you to wirelessly control the mixer using the controller app. To transmit audio from your smart device to the StagePass, Again, hold the Bluetooth switch down for three seconds till it begins fast flashing and you can select StagePass 200 audio in your device's Bluetooth menu. Once connected, additional status icons and buttons will appear, including a new phantom power indicator. Tap the open mixer button. The fader screen is the first page to appear. You can see some minor differences from the StagePass 1K Mark II screen. For example, the top left now not only shows the StagePass 200 unit status icon, but if a battery is installed, also a battery status icon that turns yellow when under 20% and red when under 10%. The battery status icon can also be tapped for more detail, including time until fully charged or remaining charge. The interface for the StagePass 200 also includes two new switching tabs on the right for the delay and chorus effects. Tapping the delay tab will first open the delay fader screen, allowing you to control how much of the delay effect to apply to each channel, as well as the strength of the delay with the orange return fader. Tapping the delay pop-up in the bottom right will open the main delay effect screen. You can customize the delay by using the tap tempo button, setting the time manually using the slider, adjust the sustain of the delay with the feedback gain slider, and remove high frequencies with the LPF, or low pass filter, to reduce harsh T and S consonant sounds when singing. The return fader on the right controls the strength of the delay going to all channels. At the bottom of the screen, you can also switch to other effects like reverb, which we covered in the previous StagePass controller video, or chorus. The chorus page provides similar controls in the center with an on-off button in the top left, a slider to control the speed of the chorus, depth to control saturation, and a low-pass filter to, again, reduce high-frequency sound. Once you've tailored the reverb, delay, and chorus effects to your liking for a specific song or environment, you can save the collective settings as a preset on the left side of the screen. Simply press down on the user preset A, B, or C, and wait for the green circle to complete to save your effect preset. Then use the effect button in the top left to add or remove the effects from your sound. Tapping the X in the top right corner will return to the previous screen. The StagePass 200's next tab at the top is the EQ preset screen. The left side of the page provides controls for each channel's green EQ preset knob, four band EQ, compressor, a mic simulator for channels two and three, and ducker for stereo channel four or five. 
Looking closely at the green EQ preset knob, you'll see that the line around the knob has a solid section in the middle, but dashed lines on the sides. The solid line is the same for all inputs, providing a high-pass filter when turning to the left to cut out unwanted low frequencies for presenters or singers, and right side providing boost to the lows and highs when a richer musical sound is desired. When moving the green knob to the left onto the dashed preset line, channels one, two, and three again replicate the same high-pass filter EQ, but now also include compression that's great for vocal. While stereo channel four, five maintains a flat EQ, but adds compression to help level out any drastic dynamic changes when playing different tracks from your Bluetooth device. When turning the green knobs to the extreme right, channel one can be used for keyboards by providing a flat EQ with compression. Channels two and three are designed for guitars with a slight high pass filter EQ, compression, and a blending of the Mike Sims condenser mic and channel four or five providing the same rich music EQ with compression to even out your musical playlist. If you want more control of your sound though, the Stage Pass 200 also has customizable four band EQs for each input, as well as a comprehensive six band output EQ that can be opened on the right side. Like the four band EQ, you can control the Q frequency and gain of each of the six bands, as well as set the type of curve or bypass specific bands to compare the sound with or without EQ. Along the top, you can also access EQ presets for the main output with an EQ for when your stage pass is at the front of house on a stand or when it's on the floor being used as a monitor. The arrows at the top help to easily navigate between the input channel and the main output EQs or press the X to close them. Below the EQs for each input is the compressor. Tapping on it will open the compressor page. Compressors help to reduce distance between the loudest sound and the softest sound so your listeners aren't wincing in pain at intense moments or straining to hear at more intimate moments. The sliders on the right can be used to control the compressor with a compression chart on the left to help you visualize the changes. For example, when moving the threshold slider, the circle T in the chart moves. Threshold will trigger the compressor to kick in whenever the input volume from your microphone or instrument is louder than the threshold limit. You can also check the input volume of your instrument using the input meter directly to the right of the compression chart. Ratio sets the slope of the compression, letting you set how sharply volumes above the threshold are compressed or reduced in volume from a one to one ratio being no compression up to a 16 to one or almost flat limit on volumes. The GR meter to the right of the compression chart also shows how much gain reduction or volume reduction is being applied when the compressor is activated. The attack slider lets you control how long the compressor takes to reach full compression once activated, ranging from one millisecond to 120 milliseconds. Lower attack times can provide a punchier sound by allowing more of this initial sound through before compression while faster attacks can tighten up the sound or help avoid distortions from clipping. Release is the opposite and allows you to control how quickly the compression decays when the sound is no longer over the threshold. And to compensate for any volume lost when compression kicks in, the output gain slider can provide a small boost to the compressed sound from zero to 18 dB. If you are on channel two or three, there will also be a mic simulator button. The mic simulator lets you emulate the sound your instrument would have if a dynamic or condenser mic was placed in front of it instead of plugged directly into the mixer. You can create a different ambiance for your instrument by using this slider to blend the sound from your instrument cable 
and the simulated sound of the dynamic or condenser mic. The button in the top left turns the effect on and off. However, if you don't have the time or confidence for customizing your settings, the presets tab along the top offers microphone, guitar, and percussion presets with combined EQ, compressor, and mic sim settings for a fast, professional sounding setup. Then, tapping X will take you back to the EQ preset page with a few final additions. The right side of this screen also provides an indicator at the top to show when phantom power is turned on for channels one through three, the main output EQ button, an indicator button to turn on or off the FBS feedback suppressor, and the yellow mode knob for helping set your sound for speech, music, or club environments. Our Stage Pass 200 video also covered the monitor link menu for setups with additional Stage Pass 200 units, with monitor giving you independent volume control of a personal monitoring speaker, while link out is used for the main unit of a multi speaker system, and link through used for any successive Stage Pass units. And finally, buttons for activating or editing details of the main effects. Though you can also use the pop-up buttons at the bottom to more easily edit parameters for individual channels. So if you're on channels one, two, or three, you can customize the amount of each effect for each channel. Or if you're a karaoke person, you can check out channel four or five at the top for songs played from your Bluetooth device where the vocal and backing tracks are split between left and right, allowing you to easily switch each track on or off. There are a lot more features to explore and learn about in the new StagePass controller app, so make sure to check out our previous StagePass controller video to learn everything you can do with these new StagePass systems.